We also weekend. say that every year that the Premier League is superior and every year the people who watch other leagues come out and say, <laughs> you're an idiot, aren't you? I just think over two legs, Arsenal will be the stronger, but the narrative of the Harry Kane is strong. It's a strong narrative. Don't sleep on Bayern and don't sleep on Madrid because City aren't as good as they were last season. Here we go then, Champions League on Tuesday night. The big, big fixtures are rolling around towards the end of this season. We've got Arsenal versus Bayern, Real versus City, Scott Saunders, Harry Simi, Jacob Coleshaw, Grizz Khan. Harry, let's start off with, with Arsenal. Now, we mentioned on our, our last show, our Monday uh, show, that you're not going to be working at this one. Um, gonna enjoy it. Gonna take it in. Are you gonna be filming yourself singing the Champions League? <laughs> I'm gonna be filming myself singing North London forever. No, no. no. Harry, how are you uh, feeling for, for this one, mate? This is this is a massive tie. Yeah, a, a season-defining tie, really. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, it's always nice to go into that kind of game when you know that you've done your bit in the league, at least for now. Obviously, that you know you got to do it again at the weekend, but to go into it knowing that you've got the result that you needed against Brighton, that you're top of the table. It makes it more of an enjoyable occasion, I think. And listen, Arsenal have got some scores to settle with Bayern because for many years they were a thorn in our side. Um, and, and to be honest, it's not the greatest Bayern Munich side at the minute. So I'm not saying that I'm arrogant or that Arsenal should be overconfident because it's the Champions League and they experience it all the time. We haven't experienced it for a long time, especially with this group. This manager hasn't experienced it before. So I think we have to be wary, but there's no reason not to be confident. Scott, Harry mentions Arsenal's record against Bayern Munich. I think we go back to 2017, really, really disappointing result, even the time before that in 2015. Uh, Scott, how much do records like that play an impact on ties like this? Do you look at sort of Arsenal's record against Bayern, which isn't great, and think, you know what, that actually changes the dynamic, or do we just have to look at current form at this moment in time? I don't know if the, the players necessarily will, um, but I think the fact that the fans carry it, because that was like prime banter era Arsenal, wasn't it? That was, you know, 10-2... 5-1. Look how, these, look how excited Scott lines. gets talking about it. Yeah, they're they're, they're it. out of the banter era now. And, and I think that's the important thing here is Arsenal have grown up. They've rebuilt. They've matured. Like last season, they were emotional. This season, they've matured. And now they have a test of, all right, we're back here. We're back where we fell at this hurdle previously a couple of times. And now it's time to make a statement. And I feel like the fans will be, they'll have a little bit of like, They'll be a little bit scared that that could happen again, but this Bayern team is, is not going to do, the, do that to them this time. And I think Arsenal will feel that this is a fantastic step in their progression to get past Bayern, who've done that to them in the past. Because, Grizz, you've r ranted and raved about how uh, good Arsenal have been this season. You actually had them down as one of the favourites to win the Champions League. You still sticking with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The form of the last month has uh, sort of enhanced my belief that they're, you know... I said at the time, second favourites behind City. And then obviously the Madrid fans came out in their swarms. But I, I, as I said, you know, equal, equal, uh, with especially the way the, especially the way the, the, the draws panned out. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be epic. But I think it's one, it's a, it's a, cherish these moments. And Harry's speaking about it, sort of, he's looking forward to it and excited. And that's the way to approach this. And he's absolutely spot on in terms of they've done the business in the league for now. And then they can just, it's a total different f uh, competition. They can focus on it and really enjoy it for what it is because it is the greatest club competition in the world. Is this a dangerous time to be playing Bayern though? And what I mean by that is yeah. Bayern haven't been on form. Like they it. haven't got a lot to play for in the Bundesliga. You really do feel the Champions League is their kind of main priority for the rest of the season with the way Leverkusen are getting on in the Bundesliga. Harry, is there a part of you that just thinks that Bayern are putting all their eggs in one basket? They can just focus on the Champions League. Does that worry you slightly? Yeah, it does a little bit because you know that, you know, they they can go into the weekend so the fixture that they'd have in between the two legs and they could probably make changes and it won't make that much difference. I mean, they're 16 points off of Bayer Leverkusen at the top of the Bundesliga, but they do have Stuttgart breathing down their necks. They're level on points, Stuttgart. And, you know, so it's a massive embarrassment, I would say, for Bayern if Stuttgart were to finish above them this season. So maybe there's a bit of that in it and maybe there'll be a bit of motivation to not drop off in the league. But if you're Thomas Tuchel and you know that you're leaving at the end of the season, wouldn't you give it a go? Wouldn't you give it a crack? Wouldn't you sacrifice the weekend's game to be in great shape for the second leg? I think you probably would. Because Tuchel's written off the Bundesliga, yeah. Scott. Well, good. Because <laughs> so he's not winning it. <laughs> but, but should he have said that when he said it like publicly the way he did? I, I don't know. Ah, go, sometimes you can just like draw a line under it like you, you know what's the point giving false hope and 
it's, it should be right as well. Like they, they've absolutely screwed up the league campaign. Leverkusen have obviously made them look silly. Uh, they've won it for so many years in a row that it looks so bad on Thomas Tuchel, who is is paying for it with his job. But Thomas Tuchel has managed a Chelsea team that came no weren't in a title race like four years ago, three years ago, or whatever it was, and won the Champions League with an unfancied Chelsea team. And he's got Harry Kane in there, who... I talked about narrative when this draw happened. I used the word narrative so many times, so many times. And Harry Kane going to the Emirates, knowing that he has... The, imagine the fire and the motivation that he has in, in, his, in himself now, because he's never won a trophy. And the season where he was expected to win a trophy, he hasn't won a trophy because Bayern have bottled the league or whatever. This is his last chance, this year anyway. Harry Kane narrative, Grizz. How much do you buy into it? Do you, would, you, would it surprise you if Harry Kane turned up at the Emirates and delivered that Harry Kane performance that we know he can put in, that we saw him at Spurs put in a number of times, and, and I have to say saw against Arsenal a number of times in North London derbies as well? No, I wouldn't be surprised because he's a great player and great players have moments in them. Um, but overall, you have to say, you know, you're only as good as you're only as good as your teammates around you. And even though I, th- I, I, th- I mean, even though I make Arsenal very strong and firm favourites, Bayern remind me a little bit of like Man United in the sense that they've got great players in there that can change games in a moment. Musiala, Leroy Sane, apparently he's come back to training, um, and of course Harry Kane. There's some great players there. I just think. Over two legs, Arsenal will be the stronger, but the narrative of the Harry Kane is strong. It's a strong narrative. And the Tuchel factor in terms of what Scott said about, and he's right to say they've got no chance in the league, absolutely no chance. All their focus will be on the Champions League and he will want to leave on a high. And he's coming back to the Premier League, well, he's coming back to the UK where he had a horrid ending, I'd say, Tuchel. So there's a few narratives that could work against Arsenal. I still expect them to come out strongly. Yeah, you you can't sleep on the threat that Harry Kane is. And, you know, the the amount of times I've seen him rock up at the Emirates and score from the penalty spot, I wouldn't bet against that happening again. Um, But there's other players too, like you mentioned, you know, Gnabry, Musiala, even people like Thomas Muller, man. Like on his day, he can make something happen. This is a very, very good Bayern Munich side individually. And when you've got that individual quality, you can never be written off. And Grizz is right to use United as an example, I think, who can get results that maybe they don't deserve based on their team performance. We talk about narratives, Harry. How much of a factor does the first leg being at the Emirates have, do you think? It's, would you have, would you have wanted it the other way around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have wanted it the other way around in an ideal world. But, you know, it, it is what it is. In, in the past, Arsenal were, were in this position against Bayern where they had the first leg at home they'd suffer damage then they do actually quite well in the second leg but the damage was already done so I don't know this is a different Arsenal side I think Scott's right to say that the fans carry those records with them and stuff I think this group of players will just be buzzing and up for it and and thinking look we're in the last eight of the Champions League like let's give this a go what Matteo Flamini and Maran Tramac done in the past has got nothing to do with <laughs> the current crop has it so. who do we have down as Favourites and go through, Scott. I think Arsenal are, pr- Arsenal are probably favourites, but I just think that Bayern have history and they have that motivation with this is... The, they're putting all their eggs in this basket. And Arsenal have obviously got split attention. I know, I know that you have to concentrate game by game, but eventually, you know... Well, if, you, if you're Arsenal, uh, Scott, do you focus more priority on the Champions League or do you focus more priority on the Premier League? No, they, they have to take... There's, I don't think there's any such thing, to be honest. Really? I think Arsenal have to go game by game now and see where they go because, you know, they would... Harry, ask Harry, right? I think he'd prefer to win the Champions League than the Premier League. But other fans maybe would prefer to win the Premier League because they haven't won it for 20 years. But, you know, one of my, Arsenal's most painful nights was the Champions League final in Paris, wasn't it? against Barcelona in 2006. So um, I don't think... I think both trophies... Imagine you could win both. Imagine you can win both. That'd be the best Arsenal season ever of all time. Scott's done a David Raya there going for both. Um, Grizz, <laughs> predictions for uh, uh, Arsenal versus... But we just, should we go first leg or in total? Or uh, let's go first leg let's, for now. Let's just go first leg. We, we will have plenty more content on the way. First leg, what, what do you think the score will be going into the second one at the Allianz? I think Arsenal win uh, the margin of... I, I think Arsenal win by a margin of two goals minimum. 
I genuinely yeah. believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that doesn't, and that doesn't mean I'm saying that the tie will be over off the first leg because Bayern on their own patch, given those circumstances and a few incidents go their way and sort of the momentum can turn it around, but but they'll be way too quick, energetic, um, and technical these days. Uh, Arsenal in that first leg. I I, I expect Arsenal to win. I think three one. I go Scott. Two one to Arsenal. I fancy Arsenal to have a one goal lead going into the second leg. I'll go Arsenal two by Munich nil. Goal scorers. Uh, <laughs> Bakayo Saka. Build your bet with Harry Sidney. And, uh, <laughs> and, and big Gabby from the back from a set piece. Well, we okay. Let us know your predictions in the comment section below for Arsenal versus Bayern in the first leg. As I said, there'll be plenty more content on item in, so make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll cover the second leg in due course. The other first leg on Tuesday night. And this is really annoying me because I was really wanted the Real game to be on one night yeah, and the Arsenal game to be on one night. Is it going to be a double screen setup? Oh, it might be, might Scott. To be. Both are starting at the same time. That is unbelievable. Oh, goodness me. Uh, do you know what? For me, I'm more of a goal show man, really. Like, especially in the early they rounds. They do the goal show now. They don't? No. Yeah. Well, especially show, any t- so that's just ruined my whole sort of routine. I... I- I think I'm probably Maybe going to Maybe we start... should start our own goal show. <laughs> Do you know what? I think there's probably more jeopardy in the Real City game than I feel with the arsenal Bayern game. I think Arsenal kind of get through that, personally. I feel that Real City is quite a tough one to predict, Scott, or do you think otherwise? I can't... I, honestly, I think both of these games are very much on the edge. I, I know you guys think Arsenal are pretty much just a formality. that they can, I, But I think Bayern have got... I don't, don't sleep on Bayern and don't sleep on Madrid. Because City aren't as good as they were last season. I think they, they've dropped a level and they have, Real Madrid have that second leg in mind. Like they, they, City absolutely wiped the floor with them. Real Madrid, a lot of these players will want to put that right. And uh, I still think City will progress, I think. But this this game is, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know which one to pick actually. I, which one is more tasty? Sure. I think I start with Real City, maybe just check in at oh, Arsenal definitely, Bayern, definitely. and then go back. I'm surprised you say that. that which one's more? It's easily Real City. I mean, look, Bayern Arsenal, okay, great, but Arsenal haven't got that Champions League heritage where these two are magnificent clubs now. Like City are up there, Madrid are obviously Madrid, Real Madrid. If you ask me this, if you ask me to sort of talk about this game, predict this game, about three months ago, four months ago. I would have said City gonna, but I agree with Scott. Madrid have started creeping up in terms of form, mentality, players coming back. I know um, Schumann is a slight doubt for this game, um, and they will absolutely have revenge on their mind because that's Madrid for you and that's Champions League, and for them that was an embarrassment what City done to them. Whether they're capable of doing anything about it. It's a tough one. This is a proper tough one. I'm interested to see what the others think as well. Well, Real Madrid, I don't think, have played for a week as well. Mm. Um, so I think that means that they've had lots of time to focus on you know, what they're going to do, their game plan, how they're going to go about it. They'll be fresh as well, um, which is, I think, important in these Champions League ties. I always think that the reason you can't write off the likes of Bayern and, and Real Madrid, even when we always say that the Premier League teams mm. are superior is because they have much less of a slog at the weekend. So Real Madrid haven't had any slog. We also weekend. say that every year, that the Premier League is superior. And every year, the people who watch other leagues come out and say, <laughs> you're an idiot, aren't you? <laughs> well, because of the fixture schedule. No, no but- because uh, like, I think there's a, there's a Premier League bias. You all look at like, the quality of football in the Premier League and think, wow, the intensity is amazing. Real Madrid are beating teams like Hetafe and all this. And We get sucked in by the entertainment factor. you get factor. sucked in by the right, fact okay. that the Premier League is the most competitive league in the world. And then think that automatically, because they play that well in the Premier League, that that translates to Europe. But Real Madrid have a collection of some of the best players in the world, individuals. And there's a lad, Jude Bellingham. Can you imagine how buzzing he is for this? And he is that type of player who's already shown in his first season at Real Madrid that he can just pop up with goals essentially out of nowhere at decisive moments. And I think he'd be... There's a lot of Real Madrid players who will be really, really up for this one. And we have to mention the manager as well, Carlo Ancelotti, who's got a real, real history with this competition as well. I think you look at Pep versus Ancelotti. For me, I'm kicking off with that game for absolute certain. Um, I guess one one question I wanted to ask you, Harry, about Real. We mentioned sort of a, a certain aura you feel with some clubs, especially in the, in the Champions League. Real Madrid are the most successful team in Champions League history. 
Does stuff like that, and I know it's very much a hypothetical question, but does stuff like that play a factor? Because we mention it on with Liverpool with European nights. We mention it, I think you can mention it with Real on European nights. You even look at some of the sort of comebacks over the last few years. How much of a factor does that actually play? Or do, do we as fans just read a bit no, I, too I, much into it? I think that's a big factor in Europe and in cup competitions more than it is in anything else. I think when you walk out at the Bernabeu, if you've grown up loving football, you know all about that place. You look at the sheer size of it. I think it can intimidate you a little bit. Um, so I think in, in the European Cups, it's massive. Um, and look, I, I've seen it with Arsenal this season. Arsenal have gone to places in the Champions League this year, Lons, for example, where Arsenal are a much better team than Lons. But the atmosphere was so good, they froze, man. They froze. You look at the Porto game, Arsenal had to do it on penalties. Arsenal are a much better side than FC Porto. True. So in cup competitions, generally speaking, but more so in the European competitions, that stuff plays a big, big role. It's why I won't write off Bayern, and it's why if I were a City fan, I'd be wary of Real Madrid because they've got more quality than Bayern at the moment. Um, they're in a better state than Bayern. And obviously that first leg away from home, if you're not careful, it, the tie can get away from you. Scott, you mentioned a couple of individuals. Where do you think the key battles are? Is it midfield, do you think? When you look at the three of City I think three City of... will essentially Real. dominate the game, but Real Madrid will have their, their moments. And that, that's how I think it might play out. You've got Vinny um, and Bellingham, the two that I've mentioned. But like, look at the quality all over that pitch and then in the coming years. Real Madrid are going to be a force to be reckoned with in Europe for a long time to come with the players they're going to sign this summer as well. You add Alfonso Davis into that. I know nothing's confirmed, but it's looking likely. And Mbappe has just been a case of like, when, <laughs> when? <laughs> when, not if. And that's going to be, the, the way that they have rebuilt their squad, with all this money in the Premier League, with Chelsea and United spending stupid money on players, Real Madrid have, you know, gone backwards um, to go forwards. They've, uh, bought some really talented players from Brazil who are now world-renowned players. There was a couple of years they didn't really spend any money. And obviously they've done the remodel that I think is the envy of most clubs in the world on on a budget. And I feel like Florentino Perez deserves a lot of credit for that because the way that they have remodeled their team to put themselves like right at the top of the tree is... that That's how you should run a football club. And luckily Real Madrid have that kind of iconic status where they can get players that maybe other, other teams want but mm. you know you just have like Bellingham as the example right he was going to Liverpool wasn't he <laughs> <laughs> I really wish the camera had switched <laughs> um, Chris but he's not now. predictions gosh first leg only first leg which yeah, is at the Bernabeu this is well. this is uh, the, the Real Madrid did need a revamp and I agree with Scott especially midfield because City overpowered them overran them last time which you which you'd like to think they won't this time, especially with the likes of Camavinga and Valverde now, a much younger midfield Jude. Um, I can't call this one. Why did you come to me first? No, uh, all right, go, I'll, go, 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 I'll, I'll go. I'll go two two one Madrid first leg. But I expect City to go through. I, I'm feeling a one one. Me too. Yeah, I'm feeling a one one. I'm gonna go one nil City. Oh, I don't <laughs> want to say that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, do you know what? I, I, I should really know this as a, sort of the host, but when was the last time an English team went to the Bernabeu and won? I'm trying to think the last time. I think... Uh, oh, <clears> was it <throat> Arsenal, Thierry Henry? I think Liverpool done it, lads. Chelsea did. Oh, yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea, did. Chelsea, did. Chelsea did it. No, I Liverpool did it with Ben Ayoun. And uh, Chelsea did do it as well. Yeah. But Liverpool did do it. 100%. Liverpool Chelsea, of course. What about the new Bernabeu? Yeah, no exactly. Did... What if you... Yeah. yeah. Do, you know, do you know what? It really did, it did, really did um, sort of like mess with me a little bit when I was watching the... La Liga on, on, on via players it nowadays yeah. and I just saw the whole um, the bottom tier filled up because it's just been I've been yeah, using yeah. TIFOs yeah. and atmosphere's going to be cracking just, a, just a, a, a final I think this leg is going to be KG a little bit I think City 100%. will dominate possession wise but I think Real Madrid will hang in there I think a draw but the second leg I think City are favourites, but it wouldn't surprise me if Real Madrid went to Manchester and won. Real Madrid would be the more content with turning the second leg yes. into a, a one-off shootout yeah. than Man City will. I don't think City will um, like dominate the ball as much as they always do. This is what I th makes it intriguing, because I think Madrid have become a bit more organised in that manner. Like City dominated them last, as I said. I think it's intriguing. <clears throat> I, I think there's no competition in terms of which game... I'm watching anyway. Okay, there we have it. Let us know your predictions in the comment section below. Last day of the Champions League. 
it's crunch time. Uh, Arsenal versus Bayern, Real versus City, first leg. Let us know your predictions. As I said, leave a like on the stream, follow the guys on their social channels. Links are in the description below, and we will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. <laughs>